Okay, so let's have a look at population accountability, everyone, in a little bit more detail. And remember that population accountability is for whole populations in a geographic area. Now I can see the enthusiasm on your faces as I'm speaking today, so I know that after this one hour intro you'll want to run out and facilitate the development of population results or outcomes for a population in a geographic area. So here's a little bit of a tip for you um, in terms of drafting population outcomes or results. Basically what you do is you put that all blank and blank R on the board and then you just simply insert different terms. So Remember that population accountability is about a population. So we could say all families or whānau, and then you have a geographic area, so it might be tauranga for example, and the condition of well-being or the outcome is healthy. Okay? So remember that population results or outcomes are high level aspirational statements associated with a population in a geographic area. Okay, so here's a really great example of a recent population um, accountability framework. So this is for a project that's been led by the Ministry of Social Development in Northland um, and specifically with the community of Tehiku and the project is called Make It Happen Tehiku in Kaitaia. And here we have an example of five population results or outcomes and we also have examples of indicators associated with each population result and outcome. So for example uh, the community our community is culturally strong, rich and proud, peaceful, safe and connected, prosperous and progressive, clean and has a sustainable environment, healthy and well. Okay, remembering again, population results are out or outcomes are high level aspirational statements for population. And then to measure whether or not those population results are occurring, this community has chosen two indicators which map back to each population result or outcome. So for example, for healthy and well, our community is healthy and well. The headline, one of the headline indicators there is rheumatic fever rates. And for rheumatic fever rates in Northland, basically what we want to do is we want to turn the curve and we want to turn the curve down. And one more example here, culturally strong, rich and proud. So our community is culturally strong, rich, rich and proud. One of the example indicators there is the enrolment rates for kura kaupapa. So what they want to do there is they want to turn the curve up. Okay? So that's an example of a population outcomes framework with five population outcomes and ten indicators. Okay, here's another example everyone. This is an example from the US, USA. Um, it's five population outcomes linked to children and young people and this is in uh, legislation. Okay? So outcomes for children and young people for example being healthy, staying safe, enjoying and achieving, making a positive contribution and economic well-being. Okay, so you know how we talked about seven questions, seven questions which take us from ends to means. Well these are the seven questions for population accountability. So the first question is what are the quality of life conditions or the conditions of well-being for children, adults or families in the community? Now we've already touched on this, this is about defining what your population results or outcomes are and who your population is. Question number two is what would these conditions look like? Okay, what would these conditions look like if we could see them? So what we call this is the experience and the experience is simply a more in-depth description of the population outcomes or results. Three is how can we measure these conditions and we've had a little bit of a, a chat about this. These are the indicators because you need indicators to enable you to tell whether or not those population results or outcomes are occurring. Now four is once you've identified your indicators we want to know how we're we doing on the most important of these measures. So basically what we want to know is what is the baseline data and what is the story behind the data. So again, just as a reminder, baseline data is basically the hist historical and the forecast data associated with your indicator. And what we want to do is we want to turn that curve. We either want to turn that data curve up or we want to turn the data curve down, depending on how we want to measure success at a population results or outcomes level. 
The great thing also about question four is that we're asking, what's the story? You know, what's the story behind the data? What are the causal factors behind the data? Everyone has to understand what the story is, what the causal factors are, before you can actually identify how you're going to address those. So it's a critical question in terms of how we um, identify the journey from ends to means. Number five is, who are the partners that have a role to play in doing better? So we always ask in RBA, who are the partners? And you might recall at the beginning of the session, we talked about population results, population outcomes and accountability as being about multiple stakeholders sharing the accountability for achieving results or outcomes for a whole population. So critical to that conversation is identifying who are our partners that we can work with to turn these curves. Number six is what works to do better, including no cost, low cost ideas. So what works is basically a very easy way of saying, you know, what, is the, what are the evidence based interventions that might help us to turn the curve? And also what do we know as professionals and experts in, the, in this particular area, as community members, as partners? And also we ask the question, what are the no cost, low cost ideas associated with means that will turn curves at a population results or outcomes level. So this comment doesn't apply to anyone sitting in this room, but sometimes we're conditioned to think that we can't actually do something if we don't have the funding. Okay? But in RBA what we do is we say actually there are a lot of no cost, low cost ideas that actually can make quite a considerable difference and we encourage as part of our seven questions which take us from ends to means to really consider what those no cost, low cost ideas might be. And last but not least, number seven is, what do we propose to do? And this is where we create the action plan, okay? This is where we create the action plan associated with the means. So seven questions, everyone, seven questions, which take us from ends to means and enable us to identify not only what the population outcome or result is and how we're going to measure success, but also how we're going to work collaboratively together to achieve improvements at a population level. Okay, so this is just a diagrammatic representation of that. I'm not going to spend much time um, on this slide today, but what you can see there is that we sometimes we don't know what we don't know. Um, so what we do is we create an information and research agenda at different parts of the seven question application journey. Okay, so don't be afraid to actually say, I don't know that, I need to find out some more information. But at the same time, keep going because it's important that we move from ends to means from ends to means.